Hello everyone and welcome to part one of this little series on Unity UI. Today we're going to cover the canvas and all of its properties. So to create a canvas if we right click under our any scene and under UI you'll see we can add a canvas. Now with a canvas we have event systems as well. We're going to come back to those in the next video but right now let's just click on canvas and we're going to focus on that. You'll see the event system comes over uh, into a hierarchy when we create the canvas as well. We're just going to ignore it. Don't delete it because then your canvas or your UI elements won't work. More on that next time. So now if we click the canvas and hit F on our keyboard it's going to um, sort of zoom us out to it. And there's a few cool properties here in the inspector. So under the canvas you'll see we have the render mode. So by default it's set to screen space overlay and this basically means that UI elements are layered on top of the screen. So if you have like an image and or yeah let's say you add an image to your UI to your canvas that image is going to be overlaid on top of all the other objects in the game. So say you've got a 3D game that UI is always going to be above everything. Next you see if we click on this we have screen space camera. This is quite similar but this just means that the canvas is placed a given distance in front of the camera or the given camera. So this means that the camera settings will affect the appearance of the UI. So you can see we, I can add a render camera here. So if I drag in our main camera as our render camera then we can uh, any settings that we have in our camera will affect the way our user interface appears. So basically UI is displayed on via the camera so if we add an image into our canvas you'll see the image rather than having a massive canvas like we did a minute ago all the UI is actually here within the camera space so whatever the size of the camera is the UI is affected so if we change the uh, size of this camera here you'll see the UI is getting affected by the size of the camera which reflects here as well under our display as we change the size of the camera the size of the image is changing it is changing but because it's all relative we don't see it until it goes to a negative size but that will change based on the camera settings but now we can delete that um, let's go back to our canvas and next you'll see we have world space now this one's slightly different to the, both the others this is where the canvas actually behaves as an object you may be wondering what does that mean now, in simple terms, it means the UI is going to render behind or in front of other objects that are based on 3D placement. So, say you have a square, uh, or a cube, sorry, I would, I'm not going to add 3D objects now, but say you have a cube in at the front of the screen, if you imagine a 3D space, and then behind this cube you have a UI panel or an image, and then behind that image you have another cube. The cube at the front is going to overlap the UI, and then the cube behind you won't be able to see because the UI is in the way, if that makes sense. It basically allows you to have user interface that blends in with the world space, which is great for 3D games. You wouldn't use this on a 2D game, um, or well, you could use it on a 2D game, but it's less often that you would expect it to be used on a 2D game. You'd normally only see it in 3D games. Okay, I'm just going to go back to our overlay screen space because this is probably the most common one that people would use. Let's talk about pixel perfect. That literally is it's an on or off. It's true or false. And it just forces elements in the canvas to be aligned with pixels. Which basically it makes elements appear sharper. It prevents blurriness. However, it's important to note that if elements are scaled or rotated or animated, it can make the transition unsmooth. So if you're trying to sharpen it by making it pixel perfect, if you are animating it, rotating it, scaling it, it can come out a bit unsmooth and not too nice to the eye. So it's not always a good idea. This is probably best to put on static elements which aren't going to move. If you have move, um, elements which are quite animated, then you might not want to have pixel perfect enabled. Okay, the sort order, that is the order the elements are displayed. So elements of a higher order are going to be displayed over elements of a lower order, basically. So say we have an image of order one. I can actually show this one. If we create an image, uh, and the, the this canvas order is going, the sort order is going to be one, and we have a 
image here with a red color and if we then duplicate this canvas and have an image with a blue color because sometimes you'll have um, more than one canvas in a game you'll see if we then change this sort order to be zero we can't see it but if we make it two so it's above the other canvases sort order you'll see we can see it because they're overlapping so if we now move this image you'll see as we change the sort order of both of these so if we make this one free you'll see we can just change the order the canvases are displayed okay so next we have the target display this is the display that the canvas is going to be rendered into so we if we go under game here you can see we have multiple displays uh, you have to have cameras rendering different displays but we can set one uh, this canvas to target display 4 and if we go to display 4 we won't see anything because there's no cameras but we can just basically specify what display we want a canvas to target and this is good with like if you have a game which is going to run on multiple screens or things like that this would be useful I mean I don't know why there's eight displays I guess some for some reason you might need that I don't know but it just allows you to render UI on different displays next we have additional shader channels uh, we're going to leave these out because these are these get quite advanced and I don't I want to keep things as simple as I can I don't want to confuse you with too much information so we're going to leave that out and we're also going to leave out vertex color always in gamma space or gamma color space because it's these things get quite advanced we don't need to include them and nor do you we really need to use them I mean, if you're using shaders then you might play around with these next we're going to talk about the canvas scaler so we have UI scale mode now constant pixel size this means elements are always displayed at their given size say we have an image of 100 by 100 it's going to be displayed at that pixel size the scale factor is the multiply of how much larger the elements are displayed compared to their given size so if it's 100 by 100 and the scale factor is 2 it's going to be displayed at 200 by 200 pretty simple and reference pixels per unit uh, this is how many pixels are displayed per unit to unit. Now, once again, I'm not going to get too involved with this, um, but a unity unit is basically, uh, it's like a set amount of distance. So, like one unity unit, you think, you know, from one square to another, it's, it's basically a distance that unity make. It can be anything. It's not like a, it's, you know, it's not got a set unit. It's just a unity unit. So you can basically make it anything, but we're not going to talk about it too much. Next, let's go to scale with screen size. You'll see that we get a few more settings. Now, scale with screen size is where the elements are always displayed at different sizes based on the screen size. So the reference resolution, we basically want this to be the resolution of the screen that the canvas should reference. So say we're playing a nine. Uh, let's say we're playing. 1920 by 1080 we want this reference re resolution to ideally be 1920 by 1080 and then the screen match mode is how you want the elements to scale so we can have them match the width or height we can expand the elements to that size or shrink them and the match uh, this is sort of if like the ratio of width to height I always keep this at 0.5 because it's there it's right there in the middle but you can play around with these as you create UI. Okay, last but not least, constant physical size. Now, constant physical size, this is where elements are positioned and sized in physical units, such as millimeters. So as I was saying a minute ago, we know that unity units don't have specific units. However, we can have physical sizes such as centimeters, millimeters, inches, points, and peakers. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that, that last one. I don't know, I don't know how you pronounce that, but there, I don't even know what that is, to be honest. Okay, so apparently that is about roughly a sixth of a foot or something, or an inch, I can't remember. Um, yeah, no idea what that is, but there you go. We're going to leave out all the DPIs because these are a bit advanced, these, they're basically dots per inch. Um, it's the number of, I believe it's the number of pixels that are referenced per inch but I don't I'm not I wouldn't go by that because I'm not 100% sure myself I don't really play around with uh, the physical units or constant physical size 
The only one I use is scale with screen size, so I wouldn't really play around with these. And the graphics raycaster we're going to leave out once again because we're talking about raycasting here. It's a bit more advanced. We're not going to get too advanced because I don't want to confuse you. I want to keep things as simple as I can while still covering everything you sort of need as a starter. So that is it for the canvas. Now, I know that's quite a lot of information for the first video. And there is a lot to take in. But what I recommend is going around, creating your own canvas just add some images in there and even though we've not covered those yet you don't have to play around with the properties of the image itself but you can just add some elements and play around with the canvas settings see what different things you can get and just play around with it and then over time you'll sort of start learning and remembering what each thing is next video we're going to talk about the event system there won't be too much to cover here i mean it does look quite complicated but we're not going to cover every last detail once again we want to keep it as simple and understand and basic as we can so thanks for watching this video everyone i hope you did find it helpful i'll see you in the next one and goodbye